Overpopulation in American city centers like New York and San Francisco became increasingly problematic during the 19th century. This influx of people led to higher real estate prices, forcing many laborers to move outside of the city. However, since many of the workers were still employed within city centers, a cheap way of efficiently transporting large amounts of people between their homes outside of the city and the city center was needed. The solution to this problem during the 1800s was animal-drawn streetcars. Horse cars, as they were known, were able to haul large amounts of passengers in cities like Manchester, New Hampshire, and New York City. As technology developed during the 1880s, the animal-drawn lines were replaced with electrified streetcars. Since fares were extremely cheap and streetcars were an efficient mode of transportation, they naturally became popular with Americans. The popularity of the streetcar increased as new infrastructure was built surrounding the lines. For example, new housing developments and amusement parks known as trolley parks built at the end of streetcar lines increased ridership. One now famous example of a trolley park is Coney Island, where thousands of riders were brought to the beachside amusement park via horse-drawn carriages beginning in 1829. Another example is Oaks Amusement Park in Portland, Oregon which attracted over 300,000 visitors during its first season of operation. Aware of the rising popularity of the streetcar, rich businessmen consolidated ownership of multiple lines in many cities, forming powerful, corrupt monopolies. The city governments took note of these monopolies and forced the owners to agree to certain conditions in exchange for the rights to operate. The most important of these concessions were fixed five-cent fares and the stipulation that tram companies agreed to maintain the roads surrounding the tracks. At first, these conditions weren't a problem for the extremely profitable streetcar companies. However, after a few years, they became more burdensome. For example, the agreement to limit fare prices at five cents became problematic after World War I, when the value of the dollar plummeted as a result of inflation. The company's agreements to repair roads became similarly burdensome because of the invention of the car. The owners now had to repair the roads that were being damaged by cars, when in the past these roads had almost exclusively housed their streetcars. These issues made the streetcar less profitable, especially as ridership dwindled due to delays associated with thousands of new cars crowding onto the roads. As a result, many streetcar companies began filing for bankruptcy as early as the 1920s. Conditions only worsened amid little support from lawmakers, who favored policy like the Federal Highway Act of 1956 that supported automobiles over streetcars. Laws like this one pushed many of the companies that were barely surviving into bankruptcy. Although some companies tried to compete with cars by replacing or augmenting streetcar lines with bus services, these efforts came too late. Eventually, the defunct lines and the companies that were barely surviving were bought by National City Lines, the holding company for General Motors. They began to rip out streetcar lines and replace them with General Motors-made buses, marking the end of this era of streetcars in the United States. The buses were seen as more flexible and economical, since they did not require the infrastructure like tracks and power lines that streetcars need. Once national city lines ripped out streetcar tracks and replaced them with bus lines, streetcars all but ceased to exist in the United States until the early 2000s, when Portland, Oregon became the first city to open what is known as a second-generation streetcar network. Networks like this one emulate the operational model of the original streetcar by having overhead wires and by sharing the street with other forms of transportation, but use sleek modern trains with low floor boarding. Following Portland, several other cities including Seattle, Tucson, and Cincinnati opened similar networks. Many other cities are currently constructing new streetcar systems. Networks in Tempe, Arizona, and Orange County, California, for example, are scheduled to open in 2021. Eventually, with enough projects like these, the streetcar might once again become a dominant mode of transportation in the United States.